Judge Robert Bob Kelleher. You know, after a presentation or presentment or an introduction like that, I think my best bet would be to sit down and quit while I'm ahead. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Martina. Right in there, baby. Talk right into it, Bob. She's done this more than I have. I'm not going to just plain sit down because on an occasion like this, uh, my heart spills over uh, as I try to express what it means uh, to, to anyone in tennis to be uh, received and acknowledged in any way uh, and complimented as Billie Jean did and indeed just to be invited here and to be inducted is uh, it's the epitome of all that one could hope for in tennis. Uh, I could stop there, really, but uh, someone suggested there are still a few words left over from John McEnroe's speech last year. <laughs> so maybe a few minutes. Uh, thank you, John. Uh, you know, a keynote was said here by Bud, as it so often is, in his remarks. Uh, this is a game, this is a family game, it's a friendly game, it's a, it's a, all of you are tennis fans or tennis players, and you all know uh, how much the game means uh, to each of you, to individuals and to groups. Uh, there's something about tennis people, as I've seen it in the various paths I've crossed in life. Uh, the tennis people are the best. <laughs> And maybe the best of all of them uh, are those Aussies like Mal. There's something about those uh, mites, as they call each other, uh, that demonstrates what's really the best in tennis. And that is that friendship, teamship, uh, team spirit, and all such things. I saw an example of it a year ago in Los Angeles. I'm sure you'll all remember uh, Rod Laver suffered uh, a stroke, a very serious stroke. Fortunately, he was but 10 minutes away from the UCLA Medical Center. They had him there in 10 minutes. Uh, some wonderful doctors took care of him. Uh, our tennis tournament was on in Los Angeles at the time, and as always, there were half a dozen Aussies playing there. Uh, they heard about Rod uh, being in the hospital, and so they immediately took off group went to the hospital. Pat Rafter led the charge. They got over to the hospital and Rod was in intensive care. When they tried to get in to express their hopes for him and so on, they were told, no, you can't come in. He's in the intensive care room. Pat, led, Pat Rafter lined him up outside the door uh, of the intensive care unit and they burst into song at the top of their lungs Waltzing Matilda. Rod made a, made a good and quick recovery. <clears throat> there are so many instances we could all speak of that we remember uh, of uh, friendship, team, team spirit, and the like. Uh, Billy Jean mentioned Denny Ralston and Chuck McKinley, two of the boys for whom I had the greatest regard in all respects, on and off the court. And they were another example of the American version of this teammate business. Uh, as Billie Jean mentioned, they went down to Australia and beat some pretty fair Australians, brought the cup back. Uh, on the way down, they had to play a, a tie in India against the Indians. And at Bombay, the matches were played on a court with a four or five story building, apartment building directly behind the court which was bedecked with some Indians sitting with their legs hanging over the, the balustrade. And one of them 
got on to Dennis. And every time Dennis stood up to serve, he'd say, Dennis, double fault. <laughs> Dennis didn't like that. He had a reputation at the time for having served a record number of double faults, but there was nothing we could do with this partisan spectator up there until Chuck McKinley walked back to the baseline at that end, took one court, one ball that is, hit one forehand on a streak, hit the guy between the eyes, knocked him off the balustrade. We never heard of him again. <laughs> Dennis liked that. If I were allowed more time, I'd talk at length about Chuck. You know, Chuck came in here to the Hall of Fame a number of years ago at a very early age because he was terminally ill at the time. He died very early. And if you speak of Chuck, you speak of one of the great players and persons of all time. Uh, he won Wimbledon, for example, without losing a set. Uh, Don Budge did that in 38. Uh, there was one other instance, uh, I think Tony Trabert did in 55. But that's something you'll never see again, I'm sure. No one can go through Wimbledon, for example, without losing a set. But Chuck could, and he did, because when Chuck came, he came to play and to win. In fact, his very spirit was, oh, we got to win. I remember I took him to dinner in New York one time to a fish, a fish restaurant. We had lobsters in the half shell, and they brought uh, Chuck's lobster out to him. Uh, it had a claw missing. And he called the captain over. He said, hey, take a look at this. Something wrong with this. And the, uh, the captain said, well, my good man, you must understand, uh, these lobsters are denizens of the deep. They get into fights down there, and they sometimes do some serious things. Chuck said, yeah, I understand that. Take this one back and bring me a winner. <laughs> If I were to try to say thank you and make it adequate and take the time to do so, uh, I'd use up more than the time that uh, John left over. To all of you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. President, to your board, to Tony Trabert, Chairman of the Committee, and all of you who make this place so magnificent, but who somehow managed to get, I guess, in the side door uh, of the Hall of Fame, you let one stuffed shirt get in. Thank you. Jim Wesley, the chairman of the International Tennis Hall of Fame, presents the plaque. Robert Kelleher.